Are you ready to talk about some setting powder? Because I have some great picks here for you today. Whether you have oily combination skin or normal or dry skin, it can be tricky to find a setting powder if you have more mature skin, if you're over 35 or 40, and have some texture starting to go on. So if you wanna see my top picks for setting powders for mature skin, just keep watching. I think there's something for everyone in this video, no matter what skin type you are. I do have oily combination skin, but I have some powders here that work really well for normal and dry skin too. They're not all mattifying powders. There's different types here. I do have a top favorite powder. I know a lot of you know what it is. I'm going in no particular order because I just think it's a little bit more fun that way. So I'm going to start with the Too Faced Peach Perfect powder. This was probably my top favorite before my top favorite now. It's a great powder. All of these are great powders. I wish I could have had a top five, but then it wouldn't have allowed me to give you guys such a variety to pick from if you have different skin types and things like that. So the Peach Perfect is a great mattifying powder that doesn't feel heavy on the skin and it does blur the pores. I love the packaging of this. It's got this nice flip top so if you're traveling you don't have to worry about it spilling all over the place and gathering between the dispenser and the lid. All of these powders are translucent so they don't change the color of your makeup. Some are going to be kind of peachy looking, some are going to be kind of beigey looking. Actually there's one small exception in here and I'll get to that in a minute. This one is kind of a peachy beige. It does have that peach scent to it. This is a really great powder if you have oily combination skin. And like I said, this was a favorite for a long time. And I think that if you do have a shiny T-zone or get oily during the day, this is a great one that does help control oil. You'll notice within this video that most of these powders are loose powders. I find that setting my foundation or my under eye concealer with a loose powder just tends to work a little bit better and last a little bit longer before I have to touch up later. This video does not include finishing powders and touch up powders. I'm gonna cover those at another date. It was just gonna make this a little bit too cumbersome and a little bit too lengthy. There are a couple of exceptions in this video with pressed powders like this one. <laughs> this is the Charlotte Tilbury Airbrush Flawless Finish Powder. I'm in the shade Fair. This one is not really translucent, but I am a light to medium skin tone, but I like the shade Fair because it does appear on my skin as though it is translucent. And I just realized I still have some swatches on the back of my hand from another video. But you can see there that you really can't see it on the skin even when I'm swiping it or very minimally. This is one of the most beautiful powders I own and I say I have a favorite setting powder but this one ranks right up there too. This one isn't mattifying. People with oily skin as well as dry skin love this powder. I love it because it's great for travel because it's very sleek and compact. It sets beautifully under the eyes. This is probably my favorite powder to set my under eye area with because it does smooth, it doesn't enhance the dryness or texture or anything like that. My under eye area is dry and this is just beautiful under the eyes and it sets the face. So it kind of does everything. It's a little pricey, but to me it's worth it. I love this powder and I have repurchased this powder and have a backup. I really don't like to be without this powder. Let's go to the other end of the spectrum and talk about a drugstore option because I'm just realizing in this video, unlike my finishing powder and my touch-up powder video, this one does not have a lot of drugstore options in it. That one will have more drugstore options. This is the number seven translucent perfect light powder. I have been talking about this powder off and on for a really long time. I love it and I feel like it's completely underrated. It is just barely beige tinted. This sets beautifully under the eyes and on the face. You know, nothing sets exactly like the Charlie Tilbury under the eyes, at least not for me, but this is pretty close. This is a really great setting powder for both the face and the eyes. It is as good as any high-end powder I've ever used. You could put this in high-end packaging and not blink an eye. It is that good. I love the packaging. It's a great powder, whether you have oily skin like I do, or dry skin too. This just works well on all skin types. So this is an obscure option for you. This is Mattify Cosmetics Mattify Ultra Powder. I think this is only available on Etsy and maybe they have a website. 
I got this when I was trying some indie brands and this is one of my favorite powders. It's white, but it doesn't whiten your makeup or anything like that. And I would not set my under eyes with it because I feel like it makes them look a little bit dry and kind of crinkly. But if you need a good summertime powder that doesn't cake up, it doesn't look heavy, it doesn't have bad ingredients in it, this is a great option for you. You can put a tiny bit underneath your foundation to absorb your oil. You can put it over your foundation and it really works to help absorb the oil and to prevent you from getting oily as quickly. This is a great mattifying setting powder. The formulation that they use really works. I like the It Bye Bye Pores pressed powder a lot more than I do the loose. I don't know why, this just works so much better for me with my skin. I do not recommend using this if you are going to be in flash photography because I do feel like you can see it a little bit. If you're just going somewhere on a normal day, this is a great powder for under the eyes and on the face and it is portable. You do have a sponge up in here as well. I feel like this gives just a really nice look to the face, it sets well. It does mattify, but I don't feel like it ever looks heavy or cakey. I mean, I could say that about any of these. I hate things that look heavy on my face that look like obvious makeup, and none of these do. And the plus side is that you can touch up with this if you want to as well. I know this is a favorite among a lot of people. I just don't like it in photography, so that's why it can't be, you know, a total number one <laughs> favorite for me, but it is a great, powder option. If you are someone who has tried banana powder before and you felt like it looked too yellow or too just weird on your face, you might want to give the Dermablend Illuminating Banana Setting Powder a try. I used this in a video um, where I did red lips and I just wanted a little more warmth to my skin. It works beautifully for that. I really have never been a fan of banana powders at all. This is more of a creamy banana shade. It's not an obvious banana yellow banana powder shade. I said banana a lot there. But it does work to brighten and help the skin look a little healthier and give a warmth to the skin. And I find that depending on how I apply it, it will either give me a little more illumination or just help set my makeup. If I use a brush and dust it on, it sets my makeup nicely and it does help it last for, I think it says 16 hours or something like that. It's crazy. Yeah, it says it locks in makeup and brightens, provides a soft sheen, smudge resistant, and enhances the wearability for 16 hours. Never flat, never ashy. And I do find that to be true. It really does help my makeup last a long time, but if I apply it with a sponge, or if I let it set on the face and kind of do a mini bake with it, it will give me more illumination. So if you have drier skin, that might be something you want to do because I know you guys like your makeup a little glowy. You know, we oily combination skin people have that natural glow, so we don't always need that extra illumination. But depending on how you apply it, you can get that or not. I still have three. I say three because we're doing 10, but there's kind of two that are combined. So I still have three left after this one, and this one is my favorite. I'm going ahead and giving you my favorite because I keep staring at it, and I just love it. I could hug it. I think I did in one video. I have talked about this product pretty consistently since it came into my life in October or September. This is the Lancome Long Time No Shine Powder. This is such a great mattifying powder. It has surpassed all other mattifying powders for me. So I have talked about some great ones here and they are great and that's why I wanted to put them in this video. But if I had to eliminate all other setting powders from my life forever and replace them with one, this would be the powder I would replace them with. It is so beautiful because it mattifies without looking heavy at all and I'm able to set under my eyes with it and it doesn't make me look dry or emphasize any texture or anything like that. It's so pretty. I can apply it with a sponge, I can apply it with a brush, and it just works beautifully. I can touch up with it later if I'm home and I wanna touch up with it. It just never cakes up no matter how much I put on. It's beautiful. You know, if you look too matte, you, you know, it's just obvious that you're wearing makeup. This just gives you kind of a soft matte look no matter how much you put on. It's so pretty. I've talked some of my beauty friends into buying it. They love it as much as I do. I've talked some of you into buying it. You love it as much as I do. This is great stuff. I have another Too Faced product for you guys. This is the Ethereal Setting Powder. I always want to call this Ethereal Light Setting Powder and I don't know why. This is a lovely 
powder. If you want to set your makeup and you want a little bit of a glow, not an overly obvious glow, but you want a little something something. You know, so in the Too Faced world, if you're dry or normal, you might want the Ethereal Setting Powder. If you're Oily Combo, you might want the Peach Perfect Powder. That's kind of how I would look at these. This is a really beautiful powder, even on Oily Combination Skin, if you want a more radiant look without being overly glowy. I know some of you are going to give me a big eye roll for even mentioning this brand in here, but the powders are really good. And I mentioned the concealer in my concealer video. And so I'm counting these two as one just because they come in a set if you want them to come in a set, but they're really good. So this is the KKW Bake Powder and Brighten Powder. This might be my second favorite under eye setting powder to the Charlotte Tilbury. It's that good. And look at the packaging, it's pretty cool. The Brighten, I know some people set with this. I don't like to set with the Brighten powder because I feel like I get creasing when I set with it. The Bake Powder has just a subtle beige tone. It's almost kind of a cream. I'm in the shade one in both. I find that it sets beautifully. It doesn't look cakey. It doesn't emphasize texture. It's just a nice light setting powder. I use this sometimes if I feel like my under eye area needs a little more brightening. Maybe I've put on all my makeup already and I just feel like I need a little bit extra under my eyes. I'm a little tired or I use too dark of a concealer or just something's just not right under my eyes. I'll dust a little bit of the Brighten under that area and it really does a great job. So this is kind of an ancillary powder, I guess. It's hard to open, that's why I haven't opened it yet. I'm also in the shade one here. But this is a great powder to have if you want a brightening powder that adds zero texture under your eyes. It's so light, but it does make a difference. And I don't mean light as in color, I mean light as in texture. I was trying to narrow this video down to 10. So there are some great setting powders that I have in my life, but they're not in this video. This one is the 10th. And before I get to it, if you are not subscribed to this channel, please hit that subscribe button. You might be new here, or you may just have watched and never hit subscribe, but I would love to have you here regularly. I had to get that in. I feel like I've been doing a bad job of asking you guys to subscribe lately. So this is the Bare Minerals Mineral Veil Powder and this was their holiday packaging last year. So yeah, I mean, I've had this package for a year. This is kind of a peachy toned powder. Again, doesn't change anything about your makeup. I don't love this underneath my eyes, but on the face, I'm trying to think of how to even describe this. It's not really glowy. It's not really matte. I feel like it does work well for all skin types. It sets my makeup well. I feel like it gives me a nice diffused airbrushed looking finish to my skin. You know, a lot of people don't think about this powder because they just think about the Bare Minerals mineral foundations and that this kind of complements that if they think about it at all. But you can use this with any foundation as a setting powder and it's really pretty. And sometimes, honestly, I forget about it because I use other things. It's so nice. Every time I use it, I think, why do I always forget about this powder? Because it does do great things for the skin. Something with all of these powders that I'm not sure if I said earlier or not is that I feel like they give the face a more diffused look. They do kind of airbrush the pores. I appreciate that as someone who is, you know, in their mid forties, I, I can use all the help I can get. And I'm sure most of you can too. I would love to hear what powders you're loving. If you agree with any of these, or if you don't leave that down below, I hope this helped you in some way. Also, let me know if you plan on trying any of these. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in my next video. Bye-bye.